This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hey, everybody, this is Chase from Barrel Age Flicks. Go ahead and check out our Patreon for raw, uncut footage and early access to all of our episodes. The link is in the description, and it's only $5 a month. Thanks for listening. This is no bear. Bears don't attack people underwater. Probably a beaver, then. Something in that lake killed somebody, right? I appreciate your trying to help. I'm really glad that you brought the raid. Yeah, that's better. Ma'am, it's not going to work. If you call me ma'am one more time, I'll sue you. And with today's laws, it's possible. She's good. What the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Oh, geez, you're crawling around. I'm laying a spring trap. A spring trap? I keep telling you they can come on land, you know. You don't want to wake up in the middle of the night. I'm going to shock you. This could end up saving your life. Which is meaningful yeah, for you, first year, because the longer you live, you the more sex you get to have with your sister. Around. What's going on? The man takes crawling around like this. Puts human life at risk. Nobody lives on this lake. It's really his lake now. I haven't broken any laws. What would you have, ma'am? You lied to us. That could be obstruction of justice. A man has been killed in part because of your silence. I could make out a charge of reckless endangerment. And I'm sure Peter would be annoyed at how you treat your cows. If I had a dick, this is where I'd tell you to suck it. Why, why would he come here? I mean, it's impossible. Asia, how would he get here? Obviously some asshole in Hong Kong flushed him down the toilet. There! He's swimming out! I think I see him! I think I see his tail! I'm rooting for the crocodile. I hope he swallows your friends whole. Hey everybody, this is Barrel Age Flicks, I'm Lenny, yeah man, and this is... Hey, this is Ron, let's drink and talk some movies. And... Hey guys, this is Sammy, let's do this. We also have... What's going on you fucking nerds, this is Tyler, let's talk about some modern mythology. And finally... This is Stu, let's drink motherfucker. Hey, what's up guys, welcome to our last episode into our Out to Sea series, Lake Placid. So... Oh, shit. Sorry. That's the wrong fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> snap, snap. So, a little announcement. My head is like a shark fan. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> damn it. Damn it. Oh, you got it first. So, Lenny is going to be uh, taking a uh, summer break off of uh, Barrel Age Flicks. So, uh, he's got to have anal polyps removed. Yeah, what Was it that or was like was it the uh, the the transition? Uh, it might be a combination. I can't remember. <laughs> I honestly can't remember. I, can't I mean, remember. it makes more sense to do it all at once. Yeah, but either way, either way, we have the great and powerful Sammy here to take up his place and uh, uh, to pick up his slack. Great is arguable. Hey, guys. <laughs> Screw you, Stu. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie is uh, Lake Placid. It is uh, Tyler's pick. But uh, Sammy went ahead and picked out the drink. So why don't you tell us about it, Sammy? All right. So um, the... Cocktail that I found for tonight is courtesy again of Tipsy Bartender, and it is a crocodile cooler. Ooh. So this is made in a traditional glass with ice, of course, and it's two ounces of melon liqueur, two ounces of sweet and sour mix, one and a half ounce of citrus vodka, and three quarters of an ounce of a lemon lime soda. I personally chose seven up zero because we don't run losing a foot to diabetes. And then garnish with a lime and a cherry and enjoy. Yes. All right, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Roast. <laughs> One job, Stu. One job. Ain't my fault you have defective coasters. Fucking Sammy. Um, man, so first and foremost, I'll say that, like this drink looks fucking great. Like it's got a really great look to it. It does. It, it does work perfectly well with what we're drinking. Hmm. All right, and then watching. But it tastes like a salad. That's fucking weird. Tastes like a salad. No, it does. It does. Like there's like this. Like I uh, can. I can understand what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. I. Like kind of it. it's got a uh, it's got a um, sour taste to it, which I love. I love sour taste. It's not bad, actually. Um, hold on, let me take another sip. It's not bad. Um, I give it, I give it the uh, effort. It, it, it's it's not bad, but it's it's no two thumbs up. It's not two thumbs up for me. It's one thumb up. Um, I think it's uh, refreshing. It's you know ice cold and nice. It's uh, you know it's something that you can. It's one of those quick drinks that you can order in a bar, but it's. <sighs> It's not 
something I had over and over again. It's got a lot of melon taste to it. You can taste the melon in it, very strong, but it's also got that sour taste. And I that's one thing I love about uh, these type of drinks, that fruity drinks, is that the sour tastes better. I don't like ultra sweet. I like ultra sour and a little bit of a small tang to it. How about you, uh, Tyler? Take a bite of one of the cherries that are in it yeah, and then drink it. Okay. Try- all right, it, it kind of modifies the taste. I was going to so. say, and try squeezing in maybe the lime, the garnish. Maybe it will up it with some of the more lime flavor, too. Oh, wow. That actually does taste it. They can taste it better. Dude, you keep dropping that coaster, man. Oh, keep sticking to my fucking glass. <laughs> One job, Sue. One yeah, job. I, I, I need a defective to. fucking coasters. Only yours. Uh, did you did you try it with the chair? What would you think? No, no. Do you think that made no, it taste like, a little bit better? Yeah, yeah, it definitely does. It kind of like kind of breaks down like the... Um, the cucumber <laughs> kind of like taste to it. Well, you said it tastes like a salad. No, yeah, it does. I don't see that. I think it's no, the, the way the melon cucumber. is reacting. Yeah. The oh, okay. Like thing. But what would kind of cool is if you did that for presentation purposes, if you did like some grenadine in it, almost like a shark bite. Yeah. Like, and it's a, it's a crocodile bite. Yeah. 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 It's not there bad. Like I said, one oh, thumb up. How about you? What's how many thumbs you give this? Yeah. I call this thing the killer croc. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. You really <laughs> like it. Yeah. No, it's good. I like it. Uh, it's it's not the best drink I've ever had. Like, it's definitely not like a uh, something I'd prefer. So I'll get I'll give it one thumbs up. But it is good. It looks good. It tastes good. Um, it does kind of have like this like kind of salad taste to it. Like you know, it's like a we'll call it fresh. We'll right. call it a fresh taste. Yeah, refreshing. I, what do you think? What this would be good partnered with when it comes to food? A salad? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. That'd be fucking overkill. Uh, um, I think I like a nice a nice light fish. Nah, I eat with barbecue. Fuck yeah. Barbecue? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I get it. So you're doing the light with the heavy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which is yes. actually I'm, a I'm nice thing that we, I would like to start bringing up when we do these drinks is what good thing it would be partnered with. And uh, you, you, fuck. no, when it comes I to I thought cocktails. I was the girl, Ron. No, 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 when it comes to cocktails. Like, yeah, it's like one of those, like, what, like, what the fuck? Ron's I'm becoming our new Martha cocktail. Stewart. I'm talking about cocktails. I'm talking you're about whiskey. Like, is what you're fucking talking about. Fuck you. All right. I thought I was the girl, Ron. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. All right, yep. Let, let's get back to the fucking <laughs> Drink some more of your Suck. salad. Mm-hmm. It does have a light airiness to it. Um, but I definitely understand what you're saying about the the cucumbery uh, yeah. salad type feel to no, it. No, it's a summer drink all the yeah. way, all the way. Yeah. Which what, is what would you very befitting for the series we're doing right now. True. So, like, what, so it's great. What would you give it for uh, thumbs? I'm going to give it a one thumb. Uh, I, I probably would never order it directly, but. Maybe have a little bit more, uh, like I said, of the cherry, you know, squeeze into it or something like that. Just something to... That splash it, of it, grenadine. No, but yeah. actually, I don't even think the grenadine would help. Actually, just adding more cherries. Well, we could and test just this theory. We every single time you take a sip, you you bite down on the cherry and it kind of, you know, it, it helps it out a little bit. Yeah, it definitely modifies the taste. So, uh, makes it better in my good opinion. Pick, good pick, Sammy. Really yeah. good pick. Yeah, fuck Thank yeah. You. That's good shit. Thank All you. right, Tyler, let's go ahead and Not get as good into as this uh, crocodile of a movie. Fuck yeah, dude. I don't know what that means. Fuck you. I'm trying to make some... Crocodile of a movie. Oh, yeah, that you're trying to be funny, but you're not. Yeah. You call that a knife? No, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out like the intention of that comment. Like, like, all right, it's like I already kind of know you don't like this movie, but I. <laughs> yeah. So, like, so we're knowing, kind of already knowing at a, at a time, like my position, your position. I'm going to say, fuck you. I love this movie. Okay. All right. I love this movie <laughs> no. so much that when I found my DVD copy of this movie, it was so scratched up and used up. It was more used up than a teenager sock you find underneath the bed. It was so <laughs> fucking bad. But like you know what, it's fine. It's like I I went ahead and I paid the money to uh, to buy the digital copy. I didn't run it. I paid for it. I bought it. Right. I bought this movie because I love it so much. I knew I was going to watch it. and I was going to watch it again. So like so, um, the one thing I don't really understand with this movie is like is that um, on Rotten Tomatoes it only has like a forty seven percent on the tomato meter and thirty seven percent on the audience score. Um, so I suppose this movie is like a guilty pleasure of mine. It's it's just like how we thought of uh, Deep Blue Sea. Because you hated Deep Blue Sea. This but is Tyler's a lot of Deep us, Blue Sea. Yeah. That's what I feel like it is. And that's why I actually even did a little poll on Instagram and to see who would vote which one's better, Lake Placid or Deep Blue Sea. Because in a way, there's similar movies in a way because they're just the cheesiness. Not at all. But a but di- okay. No, but, but a different animal in a way. Not the same plot and story, but it's they're both, you know, animal coming to attack you, kind of. You, you don't believe that? You don't think that's true? So, like, it, so Cujo is the same? Yeah, exactly. Well, Cujo would, but I'm just relating to something that takes place out in the water. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, like, you basically, man, like, you're saying, like, yeah, like, you know. Uh, Any creature like, feature you're throwing into this mix now. Yeah, like, si- Silence of the Lambs and Scream are the same because they're both horror films. Like, no, it's like, it's but a little no, like, what I'm saying, saying, no, what I'm saying is an underwater, underwater creature coming to attack you. That's what I'm talking about. That's well, actually, actually, crocodiles, crocodiles are on are land, too. Yeah, they're amphibious. But they so. attack from they're underwater. They're reptiles. They're not amphibians. Well, like they're not amphibians, but they're amphibious. They live in the water and they live part like on land. Amphibious. But so do water moccasins, but I wouldn't call them a frog. 
Yeah, I'm not saying they're amphibians. I'm saying they're amphibious. He did say amphibious. Yeah, there's, they a, difference. Have there's a, a difference. They have amphibian type tendencies because they are in water and land. Yeah. They're, oh. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to go down a rabbit hole. No, <laughs> we don't have land sharks. <laughs> fucking moving on. Yeah. <laughs> About to make a Jimmy Buff joke. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done. <laughs> All right. So before rewatching this movie, like what was your guys' impression of it? Because I know we all saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember it as an enjoyable fl- flick, but it's also there's something about this. I don't know what it is that I'll. I, I remember always enjoying it when I watch it, but the second I'm done watching it within a day or two, it's kind of left my brain. I, I don't know what it is about it. It just, it really just, nothing really sticks with me. And I think this is why it's one of those underrated films because nothing really is so damn good that it sticks with you overall uh, as, as a film. It does, It is a film that automatically just jumps straight to your fucking, uh, you know, thought when you're thinking about these type of movies. No, no, feature. that's that's fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, okay. All right. So, well, you know, the funny thing about it is the director of this movie also directed two of the most iconic uh, slashers, you know, a- Halloween H2O, Stephen Minor, mm-hmm. and he also directed Friday the 13th Part 2 and Part 3, which yeah. is, you know, I'm, I'm me being a Jason fan, that's amazing. But then he did this film, and I, I remember seeing this film and just – kind of forgetting it you know and the thing is i even bought i'm a big collector of horror movies and i bought the uh, shop factory collector's edition of it where it comes with a poster and all that stuff and i remember owning it and i remember selling it and now watching it a second time i remember watching it that time i was like i guess i didn't care for it as much so i got i got rid of it and sold it so then we came up we were gonna do this for this podcast and i watched it again and then i remember now i know why i got rid of it because i didn't care for it it wasn't it has funny lines it has funny stuff but to me it doesn't have much replay value that's what it doesn't have. So no, I'll just agree no, with you. I think, I think it anytime does. I watch it, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, but it just doesn't stick with me. It's it just that's what I mean. It it's doesn't fading. stick with me. It's 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 got some good stuff in it. I like Stan Winston's work in it. I'm not going to lie. You know, Stan that coaster's it's, fired. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to get some new fucking coasters. I ain't going to lie. If, if this keeps happening, it's you. Yeah. I don't know what the fuck We've I'm officially doing. changed I have the letter finger down with on the coaster, coaster before you lift it now up. Now, that's not the way it's supposed to be. Well, then it's not that you got me. That's not what it's supposed to be. Don't throw me under the bus. I'm not throwing you. Under, well, yeah, I am. But anyways, it's fucking awfully dark under there, isn't it? <laughs> I'm All used to I it. know is is that I, I I saw it when I was younger and I forgot about it. And if I forgot about it, then it isn't really important to me. So that's how I see it. That's I will okay. say that's fair. That's fair. I will say it's probably one of the top five horror rom coms though. Yeah, no, it's fair. All right. Yeah. Uh, it's, totally it's a, a very rom-com. small genre. It's not a rom-com. Fuck yes, it is. It it's is a rom-com. not a rom-com. Okay, so you got uh, the, uh, you got the main female oh, and the main, uh, the main uh, male uh, becoming a romantic entanglement. Mm-hmm. You got Oliver Platt doing the Forced. goofy best friend. All right? I ain't saying it's a good fucking rom-com. I'm Terrible. saying it's a fucking rom-com. Terrible. Well, see, you guys always talk about Oliver Platt being great, and yeah, he's got some funny lines. Uh, no, I I still love Oliver there's Platt. There's okay, funny stuff. Okay, all, okay awesome. the interaction like between Oliver Platt and the sheriff was amazing. Yes. All right? No, you know that was amazing. I will defend that. I will defend that. I did like Gleason and Oliver Platt's little chemistry. Well, it's so that, 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 that Gleason buddy in a say comedy go. Role. Aren't you supposed to say go? <laughs> and karate. Oh, we yeah, need a bow go. and then say go. Yeah, yeah, go right. fuck yourself. <laughs> okay, right. the, the interaction between them was so fucking great. It's wonderful. It reminded me of uh, a lot of the buddy, you know, comedies that goes on in the background. It hits all the points of a rom com. And then also throws in horror elements, classic horror elements. Which is really funny about this being a horror movie is that you only see the crocodile for about three and a half minutes throughout the whole film. But all that's, right. that's so all. I have, a, I have a point to that. I have a point to that. So real quick, we're gonna get through. We're gonna get through Sammy's impression of the movie before she rewatched this for like for this podcast, and I'm going to address your like, oh, it's only three minutes, whatever. Okay, cool. That's that's cool story, bro. Oh, thanks. Go ahead, Sammy. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> So my impression of it is, um, again, it's I would I would I would agree I, I would agree with Tyler. It's a guilty pleasure movie. It is one of those when you watch it, you enjoy it. You like the the quirkiness of Gleason and Pratt. Like can't stand the main chick. She annoys me to no end. Uh, like Pullman, fine. But Lenny would have liked her. What? Lenny would have liked her. <laughs> Lenny likes everything. With legs. <laughs> Lenny likes everything with Lenny legs. likes any woman that graces the screen. That's pretty much it. If you're female on a movie, but ticked. Do you have, do you have a pulse? Exactly. <laughs> 
So, but anyways, no. Um, but I do get what Stu is saying about it is one of those like you're engrossed in it when you're watching it. You're like, oh, this is this is a fun movie. It's 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 got humor. It's got this. It's got. I don't see any fucking romance. It's annoying. But moving on. But like. It is one of those great things. For me, though, as far as recalling, this is actually one of the most, like, for me, Betty White's character in this. Yes. Literally. Yes. She is what I want to be as an old lady. Oh, okay. yeah. I want that is hashtag. That's my goal as an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Yeah, I know. I saw one meme. It's like it's like some old, like, you know, old, like, dude, like, straggly beard or whatever. He's got, like, a, like a fucking bear like a bear skin, like, like, like hoodie kind of like fucking like, you know, like draped across him kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. It's like, where do you see yourself in five years? And it's like me. <laughs> and I was like, fuck yeah. Yeah. And this was like at the peak of COVID. And I was just like, yeah, fuck yeah. In the woods, bear fucking shawl exactly. over my shoulders. Whatever. I love that. She's Long, like, scraggly I beard. like the crocodile. It's his lake now. Like, yeah. fuck you humans. Yeah. This is his domain. And, and I love that about her. It's great. Then that's yeah. one thing I have to point out is it's one of the best lines to ever hear from Betty White, because I did bust my gut laughing. Just hearing her say, if I had a dick, I'd tell you to suck it. Yeah. I it's laughed my ass off. Just, just <laughs> coming from Betty White. <laughs> that was funny. Like I said, there are some funny shit in this movie, but it's just, there's no replay value to me. I, it, it's a good for a laugh, but it's like, I'll, I'll put the movie away and probably not watch it for another 15 years. But no, then that's, that's what still it is replaying me. it. Yep. There we go. Okay. But replay value is like, I, there's movies that I will watch once or twice a year to almost every year. That movie is not something I'd watch like that. This no, is, that's fair. Yeah, that's that, fair. That's it's not on a loop film yeah. for you. Yeah. No, yeah. no, no. All right. So, so real quick, before we get into like, into the bones of this fucking movie, like, like what, what are like, Mm, we'll say like three movies from each of you. What is a movie that you watch every year? Oh God, I have more than three. <laughs> okay, easy. Aliens, Blade Runner, and Empire Strikes Back. All right, cool. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's it, any. Yeah, I'd probably have to go with Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, new Nightmare. It's a good question, Tyler. Spaceballs. That's what it is. Spaceballs. Yeah. That's 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 awesome. No, that's a but, good and the reason that is that's something that I that I having kids. It's something I can have going on and watch it, and they enjoy also. Yeah. yeah. All right, Sammy. Uh, Jaws. Yeah. Of yes. Course. yes. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. I mean that I've literally watched that probably ten times already just for the summer. Um, so Jaws, of course, and then honestly for me it would be Mad Max Fury Road. Yes. And um, I'm gonna go like a little bit more like off 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 cue but one of my personal fans obviously is trick or treat hey that's mm -hmm. a good one and just a future teaser for uh future teaser sorry His mental train derail people <laughs> sorry gotta be perfect hold on have you seen my bad ball <laughs> <laughs> have you seen my bad ball okay a future teaser for frank the, and beans <laughs> a future hey, teaser oh for uh, the frank or the beans <laughs> You guys are oh, killing me. Oh, jeez. Future teaser. When's that movie going to be done? <laughs> soon. Fucking soon. How many soon, times apparently. are going to say future fucking teaser? All right. Future teaser. Nobody, fu nobody cares. Yeah. A future the moment's gone. Just let it go. A it's over. A it's time's up. This is now a shtick, just so you're aware. <laughs> so our future, for future teaser. teaser will be that we will be doing All right, say it again. trick or treat. Future teaser that we're going to be doing more movies. There, there you go. Shut up, Stu. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> dick over here. So All right, just some background. So fucking professional. Rod is just pointing <laughs> angrily, <laughs> trying to <laughs> give the signal to Sammy. Go, go, go! And he's getting so angry. <laughs> putting it. Good. Fuck I love this. Uh, spoiler: There will be a small batch trick or treat episode. There you go. That's Why funny. is that a spoiler? That wasn't what I was I talking about. What do you? What were you gonna do? Your Fury Road coming up. Oh. Nobody, nobody cares. That's nobody. gonna be your your pick that you're doing your first movie pick for our. Okay, let's hard sports. reset. Seriously, like. <laughs> All right, thank you. No, we need to keep that. Fuck you. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Done with Stu. <laughs> right. Well, Lenny would have been liking it. I'm building a wall right here. <laughs> Taking a GoFundMe page. Build the wall. Build the wall. That's right. You're literally just filling a seat. That's fucking cold, dude. You asked me to be part of this, you did. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know why the, like, that took so long to register. You're literally just filling a seat. You're You'll a never be good enough. <laughs> oh, my God. One, because you're female, but two, you're not, Lenny. Yeah. 
You're a pulse and a sexy voice. <laughs> That's all Fucking I Fucking know your place. <laughs> exactly. Right. You're just here to lure in the creeps to our podcast. That's all. All right, Sammy. Man bait. Why is Lenny listening to our show all of a sudden? <laughs> you, didn't, you, didn't a, you didn't give a fuck. You didn't give a fuck about our show before. Suddenly he listens to every single episode. Oh, so weird. Oh, this is amazing. All right, no, seriously. This shit better fucking stay in. God damn it, Ron. <laughs> I guess I'm going to have to keep it in. So you guys are going to get some background materials. So there you go. Hi. All right. So, okay. So teaser alert that there will be a Mad Max Fury Road in a future Barrel Age Flicks episode. It's actually going to be coming out right after our Tombstone episode. All right, cool. Anything. All right. So, um, like, so three movies that I have to watch, like, every single year, like, and, and really more or less, like, like I just inherently end up watching for whatever reason. Like, I just, I have this, like, this, this, like. I'm, I'm compelled to watch them like something like trigger something like where I have to watch it. It's Fight Club, Silence of the Lambs, and Aliens. Oh, yes. damn, Silence of the Lambs song. Yes. So, well, hey, fist man, Aliens. Fuck, Fuck yeah. yeah Air Knuckles. Yes. <laughs> Aliens is one of the best movies of all time. Fight Club, especially being one of your favorite films. And Silence of the Lambs. No, 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 no. no. I, like, I, it is it is Your my, number one favorite yes. film. Numero yes. uno. Yeah, it is, like, it is my favorite film of all time. Like, no, like hands down, fucking love that movie. Okay. Hence, hence why it was one of the first films we ever did. Okay, good. Well, you know what? This is a good question. I know it's way off subject, and we'll get back to the movie, but what... I, I, hold on, the, hold on. Your, Crocodiles, Go. <laughs> after your top three movies, what is everybody's top one movie? I'm actually curious. Just, Sorry, that was like Because yours is Fight Club. Did we talk about this already? No, I don't think we ever have. What our top number one movie I mean, of all said, time you said, is. You said Nightmare real quick, so. That's something that I watch over and over and over again. I don't know if I classify it as my favorite film of all time, though. So what is yours? <sighs> like your number one. If you had to pick one movie that you were. The that only is, movie you could ever watch ever again. What would it be? Jaws. Sorry. I already knew yours. Yeah, Jaws is, that's definitely you. Love let yours. me Let me percolate on that we've officially broke Stu's brain because there's so many damn good films out there that i can super super enjoy you only get one Stu. need to feel the, the need to rewatch Stu, it Stu, i know there can only be one it's not highlander oh, it's so good well my, mine's is but it's not it's not the I'm one saying. film no no I'm <laughs> well mine's is easy it's aliens aliens is my number one film what yes no Next, you're saying that you good only fellas? get one film Aliens. ever. Aliens. Oh fuck you, Blade Runner. Fuck no, you, Blade Indiana Runner Jones, is... and your childhood that you literally built up in your head and literally collected the cereal boxes for. I, I understand Screw you, Harrison. that, but no, Aliens is my ranked as my number one. That would be that's my a top new 10. development. No, that's always been that. Aliens has always been my number one. No, originally it was Goodfellas, but now it's Aliens. It's grown to be my number one. Goodfellas is in my top ten, but we're not going to get into my whole thing about how top 10 movies because that's it's just crazy how many movies there are but aliens is my number one if i were stuck with a movie to watch only it'd be aliens i fucking love that movie it's iconic it's i love ripley i love the alien creation i love everything it's just aliens that is mine so tyler's fight club sammy is jaws mine is aliens and Stu is thinking on his, so. Stu's broken. Oh, there's so many fucking good films. Well, you know what? We'll go back to, like, I was like, kicking like, around Goodfellas. That was one of the ones I was kicking around. I'm just trying to think of the movie that I could just watch for the rest of my life, the only film I could watch for the rest of my life, and. It's a hard question, isn't oh. it? Oh. But it, you know, I, you know what? Static, I didn't know yours was your Fight Club. I know working. Fight Club was like all your shit. ultimate favorite, but I think that was your number one. No, it's number one. It, oh. ha it has been for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, see, Aliens has developed into my number one because, I, like I said, I have a... I it have was a not whole, that 20 years ago. No, it wasn't 20 years ago, but I, I've grown into just loving that movie even more, and it's just growing a fondness to it that I love it. So, so, so what was his favorite, like, 20 years ago? Like, The Notebook? Goodfellas. Yeah. Oh, it was Goodfellas. It was Goodfellas. Goodfellas, yeah. Actually, it was a tie between Goodfellas and Casino. Yeah. And they still are in my top 10. I, I love those movies, but Aliens is just... And, and of course, Indiana Jones was We're just talking about too. one film, not uh, like a series. Not a franchise. One film. If you had to pick yeah, one film that is your ultimate un, un, favorite. Because uh, I love Jaws, but I'm not even going to claim the rest yeah. of them. <laughs> oh, come on. You can't claim Jaws 4? Has, 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 has Stu like not picked out his favorite yet? He's no, still, no. Still, I'm yeah, we fence. broke him. We but, broke uh, Stu. I know you. <laughs> I know it's yeah, been. Like, over I love. A I love the nightmare, but I love. But uh, the reason I can enjoy mm, nightmare so hard. And, and new nightmare was because I also remember everything that came between them, 
and it's just only a I, thought it was, I thought it was the Tom Savini remake of Night of the Living Dead. That, that is, is your favorite horror film. That, that's because of what I'm connected to. What it, it, it transported me back to a certain time and yeah. what it connected to me. Um, and then going forward in my introduction to B horror movies right. and everything that came from it. So that's lovely. What's your number one? All right. This is going to be weird, but Thank just you, for you. its creativity, for Psycho the Gorman. way. <laughs> No. Split second. Deer skin. No. <laughs> For its creativity, the way it laid out hints that you didn't know at first, for the effectiveness of the scenes, I might have to go Saul. What? No, no. Garbage. No. No, 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 no. Like that's that's actually a really, really good pick. Uh I so that's actually my wife's favorite movie of all time. That's and, that's and your she, wife's favorite movie? Yeah. If I'm only watching yeah, no, one movie into, like, for um, the rest it, of a, a my life, porn, right? Yes, yeah, she's I think that's something that I could always find something to enjoy and not get tired of. So if anybody comes so, out of the road and says, "What's your favorite movie, Stu?" Saw your number one favorite movie, Saw. That that's to, your number as one. a standalone film. Yeah, uh, just by itself. Yes, it has numerous sequels, which I've enjoyed numerous sequels just because right. of the way it does. But none of them have hit the points the way saw has yeah and it does tell an overarching story you know completely from beginning to end and it does it in a really interesting way it constantly is uh, giving hints about different things and tricking you and it's always got you engrossed the 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 death scenes are so creative and we're so out of left field yeah uh, i i actually think it's a it's a per, it's a perfect movie to be the only movie yeah okay. no it's like so the point that i was going to make wow. is like is that that's that's my wife, my wife's favorite movie, and so like so one night as sort of a date night, like you know like we like we made dinner, we sat down, we we rewatched it again, and like and just kind of like kind of sitting down like and watching it like after like I don't know like a decade, ten, ten years, yeah, or maybe a decade. more like of like of like watching it, I was like I was impressed. Oh no, was, no, no, I no! Like, I was like, this is a really good fucking movie. It was the right, first you know, one. Was. I remember being good. You know what? I'm actually after after yeah. doing our podcast, I'm actually going to watch it this week. I'm going to we, let's let's go ahead and watch it because I actually want to give another. I just chance. watched it in the hospital. Sorry. Oh, oh okay. Well, you, you never know. I, I'd like to. I'd like to try and give another shot. And did it still hold up? No, no. In all fairness, the original saw was was very very good because then unfortunately I made the mistake of watching the new Jigsaw after it and then i was like yeah. garbage so but i find it fascinating as you being so like again freddie we know is your yeah. boy and stuff but i mean, I mean i'm mean, honestly like really surprised like you honestly didn't go with like halloween or or, or some of these super super iconic like again this is one film you it's only because of the, watch. The, the creativity that that is involved in it and knowing that i can always find something else pick up little clues the, the director did an amazing fucking job of dropping tiny little fucking clues it throughout. was fun it was and fun. it's like a treasure trove from hell exactly yeah. good right, fellas well, i'm gonna say this like, i'm gonna say that this. movie started a fucking genre it did I mean, yes. it did well, it, it started did the horror. okay so from from that sue i will respect your film choice but just not you all right, so I'm I'm glad we kind of got through all that. We talked about like you know what's like what's our top three, what's our top uh, favorite movies of all time. But to circle back, as Jen Saki says, to circle back <laughs> to like to your point about like well the crocodile was only in the movie for three minutes and forty three seconds, whatever. Do you know how long Bruce was in the uh, on the screen for Jaws? About the same or about less? No, uh, actually, just a little bit more, about a titch more, four minutes. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess what's that's the definition of a titch. So I guess me, you know, then I should Slightly be more than then I'll go ahead, you know, cunt hair. Okay. I'll, I'll go best. ahead and give you credit on that. You know, you are right because we even yeah. talked about in the Jaws episode and how the less you see of the monsters. Sorry. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> I, I want I want redemption. All right. The coaster bullshit did just did the same thing to Sammy. I officially will on air apologize for Stu for fucking up the show as far as the coaster. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, so Ron, what was your point? No, basically what I'm going to say is that you are right because we I know, did. I know I'm right, but go on. Okay, you're right. We talked about Jaws and how it's actually better to see less of the monster or the creature and like that because it actually gives you more of an imagination of what's trying to hunt you or kill you. So in a way, it's the same thing. So I, I, I give you. You don't believe me? No, 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 no. Like so, like so. It's it's not so much like you know, like your your imagination run wild. 
it kind of fills in the blanks and like, and it's much more terrifying. Yeah. Um, like what you can't see, like that's, that scares you. Not whatever. knowing what it is. So like, exactly. Like, I think that like what this movie kind of does, like in, and the same thing with Jaws is like, is that like when you, when you have kind of like this monster more or less like in the background, that's kind of driving the whole story. You're enabled to develop a lot more of the story. You're able to develop a lot more of the characters, which I think this movie actually has a fairly decent story. I think it has great characters. Well, there's a lot of character development. Yeah, there's a lot of character development other than the chick. Um, And also, I think I made the point to my wife when she was talking about uh, how little the the croc is in. I'm like, well, if the croc was there more, or the croc was killing a lot more people, then they wouldn't be able to maintain control to that group of people. It would have been a much larger you know, um, uh, a presence of police of whatever the, the national guard, whatever the fuck's going on. Right. You know, need to take down this beast of a monster. And that's a different film well, altogether. Yeah. So this one, well, just movie. like, just like, just like aliens, because like, cause you know, with like with aliens, like, you know, they had a great core group of characters that you really got to know. However, like in the beginning of the story, when they land on LV 426, I should tell them I'm going to get killed. There's like this whole like group of people yep. that you really need to, you never get to know. Like fucking, uh, we're, well, where's Bowski and fucking like in frost. They're fucking Dunskis within the first, like, you know, like few minutes, yep. you never really get to know them, whatever, but like, but it, they're not really important. That is, but there, there's a little small complaint. That is, here's another complaint about the movie is not enough kills. And I guess it's, that goes to my point yeah, that if there was more just, kills, they wanted to maintain the, the, the smaller control because they would have had to call in some big dogs to handle the shit. Yeah. Right. All right. It, 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 they wouldn't want to keep it quiet. All right. By keeping the body count low and very minimal type interference into the natural order things they were able to maintain the story and maintain control so thereby it logically made sense for us to get to know these characters okay you're fair on that you're right you're right so like so one thing that i will put out there first and foremost like is that this this movie is not shakespeare we kind of we kind of we kind of like we kind of touched on it earlier like it's it's not shakespeare doesn't ask you like any it doesn't have any morals. It doesn't ask any deep questions. It's just a fun movie. That's the reason why this movie doesn't like mm-hmm. doesn't stick with you and like why it's not like a, a topic of conversation. It doesn't like you know like bring to controversy. It's because it's really just made to be a fun movie, much like Deep Blue Sea. Like and like and and in my opinion, the writing is actually done really really quite well. It's tight. It's only like about an hour and twenty two minute long movie. Yeah, that's which is, short. Yeah, which which like from this movie, like if you really watch it, it's like it's a horror comedy. Yeah, and comedy is like you know like should be should be short. I compare it to Tremors in a way, but it, Tremors I think does it in a better way. But Tremors is also the, sort of a horror comedy in a way. Mm-hmm. That's how I see it, and it's also a group of characters all stuck together trying to take care of it, just like in Tremors, all of them get stranded on you know the rooftops and everything else. So that's how I see it. But I, I, all right. There, you're, you're, you know, after listening to you, you're pointing out things, and it's making me not change my opinion. But I, I'm agreeing with you. You're fucking wrong. Damn, no, I'm not that wrong. Take, that didn't take much. Uh, no, I, I, I still don't. I'm not going to watch this movie again. It, it, like I said, it, it's nothing I can watch over and over again. But the fact is, you are pointing out a lot of good, good uh, um, thoughts about this and how you know how you see this movie. So I, I agree with you. There you go. Okay, cool. All right, I appreciate that. I'm going to keep I'm going to keep on changing your uh, changing your mind. Oh, Jesus. So uh so with this movie there like there's a lot of levity. Um there's a lot of callbacks and sarcasm. There's a lot of setups and the payoffs. And like what what I'd said before like with a lot of other movies is like is that if you want a movie to be rewatchable in spite of the fact that like you said this movie isn't rewatchable, I think yeah. it is. I think this movie is absolutely rewatchable because like because like there's there's so many fun lines. In this movie, particularly ones de- develop, uh, Betty deliver- White. delivered by Betty White, yeah. absolutely. Like you know, like, there's so many lines in this movie like that are like that are uh, that are quotable, and like it just it makes the movie like a lot of fun. Yes, absolutely. The interaction between Platt and Gleason, um, like we played in the intro where he's talking about uh, you know the the spring, spring trap, trap they have on land, and they're arguing back and forth and arguing over each other. And talking about, you know, the longer you live, the more time you have to fuck your sister. Um, it, it, but, that was a funny line. But just the arguing back and forth, it felt so natural. And even though it was brilliant co- comedy, it just, it, it flowed with what would happen in that type of real thing. Yes, and, if the sheriff got caught in a spring trap, yes, he'd which be he fucking does. pissed. Which he does. Yes. Yeah. Which he does. But he would be fucking pissed, and he would be yelling and screaming at Platt. There's Platt a look of malice his on his shit. face. At the same fucking time, there'll be arguing Can back and forth. Down? And yes, Platt <laughs> would. like this calm chaos yeah. Yeah. inside of him. And I love that they're like, will you promise not to hurt me? And he's like, I won't hurt you. And he's like, I lied. Uh, and yeah. runs after yeah. him. Oh, so fun little fact, too. Like, so, of course, Brennan Lee 
Gleason is an Irishman. Mm-hmm. Like if you watch that, like his his accent, his accent yes, slips it out. does slip. Totally it does. does. Slip. Yeah, he's yeah. like he's like if you only if you promise you won't kill me or whatever. He's like he's like all right, remember you promised you didn't kill him. He's like he's like I lied. Yeah, yeah. Can, I think he, I think this was it. his breakout role actually because you didn't really see many movies. Would before, you really man. consider this a breakout? That would, would you consider him ever actually breaking out? Yeah, honestly, never. it was the, way, it was the yeah. first one that I like. I'm not kidding. When I saw him in Gangs of New York, I was like, oh dude, he was in like Blessed. Like that was for me. But I don't consider him ever have breaking out. His comedy timing yeah. was actually pretty good. I yes, no, he's a great actor. I, I yeah, appreciate definitely. him a lot. It's just he never broke out. Bro, he, have you guys seen him Bruges? Yes. Yes. Oh my yeah. God. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. I love that yes. movie. movie. Actually, I think Ron's the one who turned me on to that one. Yes. Yeah, Colin Farrell and. Um, uh, oh, I love Colin Farrell. Yeah, no, that's. That's because Ron. Speaking of satisfying. turning on, you see Layer <laughs> Jesus, Cake. Dude. Layer Cake is another good one. No, I haven't seen that yet. Oh, no, Layer Cake's great. Yeah, yeah that's dude, a decent I'm one also. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So, um, another other great like you know like story tropes in this movie like that it absolutely delivers on is that there's a literal Chekhov's gun, uh, in the lightweight Ford Air, uh, Ford Area Air Device Unit. Some bullshit made up fucking name they made for this gun. Um, it's not a real fucking gun. It's apparently like it's an amalgamation of a bunch of other guns. Where it's actually made it from like from a flare gun. Really? Um, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's meant to look like a like a grenade launcher or whatever. It's not a real fucking gun. That's um, the one that Gleason, uh, um, his character, shot at the uh, the extra crocodile, right? The yeah. one that exploded. Yeah, the, the female. Whatever. So it's like a grenade launcher, basically. Yeah. So like, so it's actually it's 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 a, it's a great point because like, as like as I said, like it's like it's a Chekhov's gun. So like, so at the beginning of the movie, he says one shot from this and it's dead. Whatever it is, like you aim it at. Yeah. And then at the end of the movie, he shoots it at a crocodile and explodes it, just like Jaws. Oh. Yep. yep. Here's a fun rabbit hole. Oh, wow. So Tyler asked me to literally watch this through my my Jaws filter with the book, with the film, everything. As our resident Jaws expert. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much, Bernard. So um, <laughs> that being said. I give you the, no credit. What else is new? Moving on. <laughs> and so, but here's the thing. And it's actually really, really funny because, you know, I know in the Deep Blue Sea, you guys kind of like talked on to you. These creature features, and even in the Jaws episode, all of the different versions and variations of Jaws. And it honestly did not dawn on me until I literally rewatched it with that particular filter how much of an homage this film is to Jaws. And I mean, I literally have over a page here, but it, I'll, 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 you know, give you the, the heavy hitters. So, I mean, you literally have the first scene, the, the POV shot as the entry, same as in Jaws. Just it's a lake versus the ocean. Then you have the first kill in Lake Placid, which is a swimmer being attacked, literally dragged with a body crane similar to Jaws. Dude, thank you for pointing that out. Okay. I caught that right away. And I was just like, I was like, it's just like Jaws. He's literally, being dragged across the top of the water. Which just I like, actually just Googled. Like was. I actually Googled, and that is physically impossible for a uh, crocodile to do. They, they don't, because it's something like their uh, ability to turn, they can't turn their head all that way and okay. propel themselves at the same time. They're, they're the yeah, ones they that, they do the, the ones that do the death. They do the yeah. damn. Well, then they, you're, they're not propelling themselves. Exactly. Their body at that exactly. Angle. Their and, body has to be one way because their yeah. tail, unlike yeah. a shark, you know, that's always going this way. And and so I thought that was kind of cool because I was I was actually watching that. And I was like, is that even possible? And, no, and really, I mean, really, at that point, you do the, the, the death roll, roll and yeah. you'd be seeing yes. the body coming up and exactly. down out of the water, well, actually, you which would it. be kind of fucking amazing. You wouldn't see it on surface level. Death rolls happen underwater and then they bury them under logs. Yep, to be to uh, fed hold on, on later. for later. Yeah, yeah. Nom, 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 nom. so totally, totally different predator. Slim Jims. Uh, but I, I thought that that was fascinating. I was honestly curious if that was physically possible. So I did, I did Google that because um, I was like, oh. And, and the other thing was the thing where the the canoe like gets whacked out of the water. Also, not possible. The alligator would actually like put its head on and like weigh it down more like Jaws did in in the film. So um, also, you have like the 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 close up of the gnashing teeth, which of course was symbolic in Jaws when there was attacks going that they didn't want to like actually film. Um, then you have, um, and I'm going to go to kind of like more, I guess more logical or more like, Oh, cool. Kind of parallel. So I also thought it was really, really interesting because one thing that we talked on in the jaws episode pretty, pretty substantially was the class difference. Okay. Where you had like, you know, the, the amity, like locals, like super snobby. And then you had like the working class of Quint, right? Like that was something very, very much here. You almost have it flipped. So you have this like, you know, rough neck, like little mountain bumpkin town. And then you have this chick coming in from New York who like knows everything. Cause she's a fucking paleontologist or whatever the hell she is. And um, again, I just thought it was really cool that again, you have this class clashing of the different classes and you have your, you know, the local, you know, 
all the references, you know, sleep with your sister, all that type thing. And then you have these rich bitch, rich, like money, you know, philanthropist. Then you have the parallel of Hooper very much with, um, Oliver Platt's character. Yeah. Where he has all this money. You don't know where he got it from, but he's like this world renowned expert of crocodiles who like flies in. Yeah. Very similar to Cooper, who, or Hooper, excuse me. Excuse me. Miss you think Irwin, if he survived, would, would turn into an Oliver Platt character? Wait, miss say, him. Wait, say that again. He was Steve more. Steve Irwin. He was more bad. You think if he survived, Oliver Platt would ever be? Because, you know, he was starting to rake in all that money. If he didn't get killed by that fucking thing, right? Do you think he would have turned Manta into. Ray. Was it a man ray? Man ray. Okay. Um, he would have turned into an Oliver Platt type character just flying in because he's just super fucking rich. And you know, he genuinely cared about the fucking animals. No, I think I, that, I think Irwin would have tried to wrestle the huge fucking crocodile. Which would have been amazing. It would have been. And he would have beat him too, probably. All right. So, uh, rest, in, rest in peace. Uh, Vegemite. Yeah. <laughs> Vegemite sandwich. All right. Rest in peace, uh, Irwin. You were amazing. All right, Sammy, did you have any other points about Jaws versus um, Lake Placid? Yes. Here, let me, um, let me, burr, burr, burr. Actually, those are, are 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 most of them. Also, much like Jaws, there wasn't like a super high body count. Yeah, which again gave to the mystique of like what was you it know. two humans, yeah, two animals? Yeah. Well, I mean, you had Pippet, you had the boy, and then you had Quint. No, and, I'm talking about in, in this. One. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm a sorry. Cow, a bear, and the two deputies. Are we counting no, animal a deputy deaths? and, uh, and the, the scuba um, scuba or human? Yeah. No, I mean, why, we, why not? Two like, humans, so two like, animals. So when that croc like takes out that like takes out that cow, that's a badass fucking scene, dude. That's dude, cool. yeah, going against the bear. Yes, yeah, so like, when the croc rah. kills the fucking bear. Yeah. Uh, this was another <laughs> one that I watched with my son and introduced him for the first time to watch. They just in there watching. What the fuck is with you, man? Stop exposing. You're gonna get no, his PTSD. No. What are no. you doing? My son loved it. <laughs> He's knocking on the door at 13 years old. It's about time he sees how the real world is. All right. Giant, <laughs> giant Asian right. crocodiles and lakes. Right, I, I yeah, that's it. the real world. He damn near you're jumped out of his chair rooting when the croc came out and, you've and killed you've the bear. You've ruined all okay. local lakes for your child now. Yeah, no, I don't no. want to go in the water. He is super excited. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've been on I'm on, on the fence and trying to introduce my daughters to aliens, and then I watched it one time. And I was like, there are so uh, many F words in that yet. movie. I'm going to have to wait on that one. So <laughs> trust me. But you, you give, but your son's a lot older, so yep. it works out. So like that, he's knocking on the door at 13. So Lake Placid is a pretty enough. pretty tame movie. It's not really that graphic when it comes to uh, stuff. Other than you no. see head I said our kids could have watched it. You're the one that voted me down. No, don't don't be a fucking dick and make your kids watch Terminator Two. I did that shit, and that was a bad idea. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's that's a great point about the uh, about the classes. Um, you know, you kind of see like see like you know Hooper versus Quint. You mm-hmm. know, it's like this like this uh, you know like working class like you know like you know like uh, um, what, what did he call him? He said like you know like I don't I don't need like this like this city by hands. You got those city hands for counting money all your life. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like like I don't need like this like working class hero, hero bullshit. bullshit. Yeah, yes, yeah. Hooper. Yes. yes. So, like so you kind of see that because like because here you have. Excuse me, Cl- uh, Kelly Scott, who's like this paleontologist coming from New York City. She's like she's more or less like a. Uh, a human version of a house cat. Yeah, yeah, I, I can, can see, see that. that. I yeah. can see that. Well, she's very Truth. prissy. Like, yeah, yeah, she doesn't like. She does like. Like, she hates like camping. She hates tents. She hates. Yeah, fucking she's mosquitoes. a princess. She hates. Ticks. She's a Manhattan princess. She never has done field work before this. But no, that's a great point. Like, but the only the only thing I will counter with that is like is that Kelly uh, Kelly Scott uh, Bridget Fauna's character kind of goes through it because she kind of goes goes through like an arc with all this because she kind of princess Sammy shaking her head. She kind of starts She's off so as like annoying. She kind of starts off as like as this like this house cat of a person. Her. This house cat of a person. Because she's a pulse. Yes. <laughs> We've already established that. Terrible. Go ahead. Spicy motor. Oh shit. Sorry. What are we gonna do about that? I got That's a it. penalty shot. No. <laughs> are you fu- spicy motor? <laughs> <sighs> Honestly, we didn't get that far into it because you guys were going Lenny would like her, blah, blah, blah. Yo, Sorry, I I, I I use their normal person name. Well, you you can vote too. So what's the vote? Bye. Bye. I'm gonna say nay. The reason why? It doesn't matter. I don't majority rules. No. Guess what? Majority it's two rules. To two. No. If nobody votes, he doesn't we, get we the had, vote on that. It, it's oh, a vote really? against him. It, it, there, it, no, everybody has to no, vote. No, the vote's everybody against has you. To vote. We've had this talk before. And it's always a majority, and the, the person who's voting against doesn't get to vote. Just Otherwise, we can always be split decision. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, by doing it this way, it's three votes. No, because you always time, have a majority no, or a minority. Time when Letty was here, there was a time where Letty voted nay, or voted nay, and you guys voted I, and then 
uh, I still ended up having to do it because it was just two. Like two third just like majority. It was a, that's what they call a two third majority. Yes, just be a man. Take, Take the shot. shot. Uh, I believe there's oh, enough of the uh, the two B sixty left. Yes, oh, there is. No, no, I don't want to clean up after the mess. Oh, oh my god! Kill it. Kill it! Kill it! Kill it! Go back to your talk. <laughs> About what? We're gonna watch this fucking yes. shit show. Yeah, the shot. We're gonna watch no, make sure you this. make sure you shook it up. Ugh, it looks like shit. Yeah, water. get it all mixed up. So gross. Shake uh-huh. it up. Mmm, yummy. After the grease, it's man. Bed shit water. <laughs> it looks terrible. I'm sorry. My bad. She tried to protect your honor, but failed. No, it was purely selfish. I just didn't want to clean up him but drunk. There we go. Dunskies. Throw <laughs> that motherfucker <laughs> away. <laughs> oh, shit. How was that shot, Ron? It's it's <laughs> reminding me of the bad days. <laughs> the bad days. As in... The long, the, long time ago. The uh, That taste <laughs> is... Oh my god! I don't know why, but it tastes worse now than it did even because last you regurgitated time. it several times. Was yeah. it from the last Lenny recording? I want to say yes, yes. yes. R.I.P. Lenny. Yeah. <sighs> May you rest in peace. Back to the movie. <laughs> All right, cool. Now that this is awkward. Anyways, back to the movie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we were talking about ah, fuck. I can't remember now. Oh, she was uh, tell some crap. What what happened? We were talking about class. Oh yeah. So like here, let me go and pick up this up uh, right here. So like so, I was talking about Kelly Scott's arc. So she starts off as like this house this house cat of a person, very very prissy, doesn't like tents, doesn't like mosquitoes, doesn't like ticks or anything like that. And then you kind of find out like like you know the excitement and the danger actually kind of excites her. Yeah. And like and this yep. is the, as she says, this is the first part she's actually been. God damn it! One job. Dude, how many times have I told you to put your finger down and hold it down before you or pull how it about off? You I'm just not take... fingering your coasters. Wow. I didn't say finger the coaster. I said put wow. your... Wow. Never mind. How about your you finger just... down. Just wipe off the liquid on the coaster so it's not creating a water seal. I like it tight. I'm going to have to go to confession because of you, you dick. <laughs> All right. You all vote that we should give him a punishment shot. You have dropped that coaster a lot. Yes. I mean, I've done it once. You've done it at least four or five you know times. You know what? I won't even require a vote. Go ahead and pour me a shot of hypnotic. You know, I'll, I'll give him a fucking badge of manhood for, like, for, like, he doesn't even Owning fucking a shit. fight it. He's just like, yeah, I fucked up, whatever, give it to me. Yep. Go ahead. He's, he's angry because he got it in proxy from me. <laughs> he's just salty. Nope. Nope. I will accept it. Even I'm not going to lie. I'm, even I'm, though I'm, it's I'm, Ron. I'm, I'm not going to lie. No, the effective no. coasters that has led to it. No, uh, I'm not going to lie. I have to ask. They this got four out of really four stars on Amazon. For you compared to Tonka. I fucking hate fruity shit. And you don't like Tonka? <laughs> Which one is Ta- worse? Tonka. Tonka. I like Tonka. I like vodka. Not Tonka. I like vodka. Which one is worse to you? The fruity hypnotic shit. Really? Yes. What I don't like it? any of this shit. That, like you know a that a punishment shots, but, or something? except for Jaeger, I'm okay with Jaeger. Um, but the, all the punishment shots, they're they're not good. But of all of them, I guess what is this? the flavor flavor profile of hypnotic? Is it like a blue raspberry uh, or it's fucking like, fruity as goddamn hell? I don't fucking know. Is, I don't is fucking it an like orange? It. No, like it is not orange. Like like blue no. carousel? No, oh. it's so. If you, what which was worse, tube sixty or that? Uh, two B, two I would B60. go two B sixty would probably be a little bit worse, but I still haven't had it chilled. I don't know what it's like when as you know at it's supposed it's, you know level. It's not pleasant. You never had it at at chilled. It's always been room temperature. Um, I still feel like it was still slightly colder the first time we was had it. But you said it was still? room temperature yeah. and out for a couple hours, but it was a little bit colder. Do you next you time we get two B sixty, we'll just pop it on the radiator, boil that bitch. That would be bad, but I kind of want to try it. I know you do. Oh, <laughs> Sick fuck. A warm <laughs> shot of 2B60. Oh, that would be so bad. All right, go back. All right. So uh, where we left off well, was like was talking about uh, Kelly Scott's character. Arc. Like, you know, she started off like as a, as a very, very much of a, uh, a house cat of a person, very prissy. And then she kind of realized that like that, like all the danger of being in the middle of something, as she said, like kind of excited her. And like, and so like there definitely was like... <laughs> Uh, for you, uh, those of you out there, like you can't see, you can definitely hear Sammy's eye rolls about Kelly Scott's character. She really hates her. No, oh, she really fucking so does. Terrible. Yeah, that catty bitch. Oh so. my gosh, she's everything <laughs> wrong with how women I feel are depicted in these types of movies. Like she really is. Oh, she was awful. All right, cool. Like, Just for right, a little so. clarification, it was terrible about hypnotic. Uh, okay, so it is made from <laughs> fruit juices. 
vodka, and cognac, which I'm already not a fan of fucking cognac. Yeah. That's, All again, right. an orange, though. I don't know. It's fucking very low alcohol. I didn't realize how fucking low alcohol it was. Yeah. So pretty much Stu's like punishment shots proof. is water. Yeah. 34 proof. Yeah. Real cute. Yeah, it's right? And no nothing. wonder he's like, fine, pour it. It's not a problem. It's like basically water. Maybe that is it. All right. No, that, I think that that means that, that he needs to do the taco well. then. Holy shit. It's 34 proof. This is like fucking wine. Yeah, like, no. You need to up his uh, penalty yeah. shot. Yeah. All right, fine. You yeah. guys say that? I'll take another one. I mean, Drink there. the bottle. I mean, I'll, I mean there you go. I'll take two. There you go. <laughs> I don't mind. I'll be, I'll be. Well, on he's a big boy. In you the beginning, we did our punishment shots. We kind of all it, like but. picked our own stuff. Like the peanut butter whiskey is very tame, it's like horrible. compared to this stuff. I don't like it, but it doesn't make me like want to like go to the, like puke it all up. I can take it. It's just like disgusting to me. That's what I feel like that. The tube 60, that shit is horrible to the point where I can't stand it. And like, I almost felt like regurgitating just that one shot right there. It was that taste in my mouth. That that's what I'm saying. You might have to do something a little bit stronger. So I, I, I mean, I really don't fucking like it. I really don't fucking don't. No, we'll just have to do double, double shots from now on. I think that's it until the bottle's gone and we'll find something else. Yeah, I mean, you, the the, 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 the vodka. Sure. Do you think the vodka's worse than that, or do you think that one's worse? Like I, said, I I okay. I grew up sneaking vodka from my parents. Oh, so the vodka is nothing. All right, like you know, thinking like filling a twenty ounce bottle of vodka with like sixteen ounces of vodka and like four ounces of soda and drinking that during my day it's a school yeah okay so vodka is water to me All so right. well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, I figure mean, out. we'll figure something out um like i said right now mine's is, is the peanut butter whiskey but i the tequila is worse for me so we kind of transferred from peanut butter whiskey to tequila and that one i can't stand like i can't it makes me i hate the taste it makes my I stomach like tequila. Hurt. yeah see, that, that's you that's fine but yeah, i but, hate it so i don't i'm not a big fan a of super fruity fucking drinks which is what this is and you we, super fucking we have to say it to the winner of punishment shots and not having to take hardly any that would be tyler tyler you by far like a so by you, far i don't even remember that jaeger bottle's been sitting there waiting yeah. for you to drink it gathering i don't think dust. you've taken it yet nope. seriously you've only tyler taken- comes in prep new and shit <laughs> i mean like i really do i mean like even today like i i came in like um i came in Whoa. i'm prepared so it's interesting. So I did not know this, but uh, funnily enough, so the Fonda, whatever, Bridget Fonda, whatever her name is. Yes, Bridget Fonda. Okay. I don't know if you guys are aware, but she was Linda in Army of Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah, she's. At the I end. didn't know that. It just kind of blew my, my brain a little bit. Yeah, like, she's, oh. she's very brief, but she's at the end of Army of Darkness. She's right at the end. At the, uh, she's one of the, in the, uh, uh, the store. Is yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Does she get, does she get killed? Uh, no. I don't no, think Ash so. saves her. Damn it. Yeah. And she turns into a deadite. Yes, that's right. No, you're right. Yes. All right, so back to Lake Placid. <laughs> oh, really? Coming here to question wanna, our fucking army of darkness. Fucking knowledge. No, 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 no. I was just hoping. Maybe if you had listened get... to the fucking episode, you would know that we already fucking dropped that knowledge. All right, but no. You go ahead and be a poser. <laughs> you know who would have known that? Lenny. No, he wouldn't. He never saw Mall you're, Rats. You're probably right. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let's, let's keep it real. Please. Please don't give him too much credit. All right, so like, so uh, my point was like was talking about the uh, the the writing of like of the movie is actually it's it's like it's surprisingly fucking good for like for what like what is essentially like a B horror film of like of nineteen ninety nine, um, like there's a lot of callbacks, there's a lot of levity, um, and like there's just like there's just shit like that you don't really get like in a lot of modern movies nowadays, and that's like uh like for, for so for example like one of the times like is like is when they're on the water uh, in the canoes and you see like the white perch breaking the water. Indicating like that they're uh, they're nearby and like and like the uh, the crocodile is close. Yeah, yeah. Like so, that's actually something like that gets called back to later. Like you know, like there's like there's this tension. Um, it's like it's like, this great tension builder. Um, and uh, Bridget Fon- uh, Bridget Fonda's character like like falls out of the water and like and the the boat gets dra- dragged away by the crocodile and like and they're trying to get like you know like get back to her. Like you see the white perch like breaking the water. Oh, yes. you mean when they ruined the movie and saved her? <laughs> all right so like so i understand that you don't, the croc I, understand that you don't, I understand you don't like her but like but the point she is like is that, the point is like is i that, really is like, feel like she's feeling like a competitive female no i, I would really obliterate do. that chick at a contest please yeah. like listen, like, listen how judgmental like, you are like like mud wrestling go? game on <laughs> <laughs> all right. so my point is like is that like is that you know not a lot of scripts have this nowadays like where there's setup and there's payoff 
like you know, there's like there's the setup with like with the white perch breaking the water, indicating the crocodile was close, and there's a payoff of it of it later. Yep. Like kind of indicate like so like so when you see it and you know the crocodile is close, you know what it means. Like and going like, also you talking about the check off gun. You know they they do a good job of only introducing what needs to be known in order to fill that later on. They yeah. do a really good job. Yeah, no, it's it's fucking great. Um, going back to the uh, the Jaws references, uh, there's a scene where like where the crocodile like you know, like lurches out of the water and jumps onto the, like to the bottom of a, of a helicopter, just like in Jaws too. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, we already mentioned it once. A uh, crocodile gets exploded at the end, just like in Jaws. Bang. Yep. So like, there's a lot of like a lot mm-hmm. of. Uh, a that, lot that's of, the same thing that Deep Blue Sea did. Where Deep Blue Sea did the all three killings of all three well, sharks. Deep Blue Sea was specifically sharks. paying homage to Jaws. Yeah, I know, but the whole killing thing, it's yes. just kind of funny. I, I I didn't even realize that. Yeah. yeah. So, like, you kind of referenced before, like, about how you really didn't like the fact that, like, this movie didn't have a lot of great kills. As a matter of fact, only two people really died in this movie. Right. But, like, but their deaths were actually quite gruesome. Yes. And it was really fucking cool. Like, you had the first guy. The first one was like, good. The second gets, one, no, nah, not a fan. The head being... It is up. fucking Why head! Why not? It, it is sorry. fucking head! For me, for me, the best part is when he finds the toe and he's like, I imagine he, he was taller. <laughs> like, yes. That part for me is funny. Is this yeah. your friend? Yeah. He seemed he taller. He seemed taller. <laughs> uh, again, but and that, that was, chick was annoyed a, the shit out of me getting moment whacked between by heads Platt and, and Gleason. Screaming every five no, minutes. No, this is a great moment between Platt and Gleason right there. No, no, but that's what I'm saying. I was going to say, like, what I thought was really cool about Gleason specifically is he is so much more in, like, dramatic, engrossed in, like, dramatic roles. I mean, and 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 rightly so. I mean, he's a phenomenal actor. I, I feel. I don't ever see him in comedy roles. I mean, in Braveheart, he did a little bit of a comedy in Braveheart. I know Braveheart's a very dramatic movie, but just his character, the way he was, he put up, did, did a little one liners here and there. You know about when they're about to go into battle. You, mm-hmm. you, you guys remember in Braveheart? Yeah, I mean, he, yeah. he was like he was William, William Wallace's best friend. Yeah, yeah but he said uh, little I funny. I think his name was Angus. Yeah, but he said little funny one liners here and there, and he was actually really good at that. He had good comedy timing. I think. I would love to see a series of nothing. films of Platt and Gleason just going around traveling to different creatures and dealing with each other with Gleason as a straight man and Platt as the, the comedy guy. <laughs> just going back and forth as a series of films. And see, no, see, that's the thing. That's the one thing I get the credit yeah. film. I, I said it in the beginning when we did the podcast is that they have great chemistry and I could see another movie with just both of them would actually be yes. funny. Yeah, it, it would be a funny movie. So Yeah, as I was way off, his name was, uh, was Hamish. Hamish. Oh, yeah, not, that's right. Not Angus Hamish. That is a a very fucking goddamn no, Scottish really name right there. Though. I mean, it doesn't get much more than that. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like short of like of naming your kid like Angus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Angus Hamish. They're hello. Uh, okay. Angus hello. is probably hello. more yeah. popular. I would assume, but Hamish is super fucking Scottish. Yeah, yeah. Like so, like so we talked about like the gruesome deaths. You know, like one guy gets bitten in half. You see it. Another dude gets like his head bitten off. You see it, and then you actually see his head later on with like with the bugs crawling out and everything like that. Like it's really really fucking cool. Um, and there, like this is another really great film. Like where I'm just cur- I'm throwing out there, and you can tell me if I'm on base. But I'm wondering another homage to Jaws when you had the Ben Gardner scene with the head popping out and scaring him. Yeah, no, yeah. it's great. That's a great fucking yeah. point. So you got a point there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Ron. So. <laughs> So like so, this is another great film. Like where they actually like they, they went for the rate the radar uh, rating, and it's fine. It's great and everything like that. It works really really well. But like but you have movies like uh, Mortal Kombat, the original one, like uh, the nineteen ninety five version, where like where they kind of held back and they like they they reduced a lot of shit because they wanted to maintain like that PG thirteen rating. Yeah. So that way they can get more more viewings. They can get more people like buying tickets to come to come to the theaters. And with this one, they didn't give a fuck. They was like, yeah, fucking gore. Like you know, like here you go, cursing. We we'll don't give a shit. Well, the head, See, cut, the head re- scene, usually PG-13 movies, I've always seen a PG-13 rule where a head being cut off was okay being in a PG-13, but not this one was not as gory because you see blood spray out and everything else. But um, It didn't feel like that gory of a film to me. That's what I'm saying. This one was very tame. Other, well, other than Honestly, the guy I, I find it funny because Jaws is PG. I didn't pay attention to, that's because they didn't have PG-13 back in the day. Yeah, yeah. PG, yeah. Jaws would have been rated PG-13 if it was released today. I could guarantee that. I had no idea what the rating on this movie was till so just now. If you had asked me, I would have said PG thirteen. That's what I would have yeah, thought. No, it's rated R. This movie yeah. is very PG thirteen material. There's yeah. how many F words are in it? I don't even remember that much cursing. I know of like a like a couple. Oh, okay. I know Gleason says it at least once. Oh, you know uh, Betty White. I forgot Betty. Ah, White. God love Betty. <laughs> yeah, she's awesome. Again, hashtag old lady goals. Yeah. If I had a dick, this is where I tell you to suck it. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Told you, that's the funniest thing that she said in the whole movie. I fucking love that scene. Well, and I, I find it so cool. So real quick, I find it so funny that you have Rose from Golden Girls, like literally with like the mouth of a sailor. And it, again, it's that juxtaposition. It's so like, what did you just say? That I, I it was just brilliant. And I, I feel like it was a really, really good casting for that female role yeah. in this film. But you just, yeah, well, Betty White was great. No, I ain't gonna lie. She was she was fucking It's fun always to genius to see old she people see. just be dirty. Oh, yeah. It, it always, it's fun as hell. It, it, she stole the scene. That's She's, why I'm imagining when we all get to that retirement old folks home age, we are going to have such a lit fucking retirement homes. It's, it's going to be, be fucking insane. I'm going to be fucking with people in my office. <laughs> exactly. <take. laughs> well, let me ask you a question. What did y'all think of Bill Pullman? I mean, do you think he did his role pretty good for what he did? I mean, yeah, he was fine. It was just very late. Honestly, back. I felt a lot of President Independence Day vibes from him in really? this role. I yeah. really did. Yeah, I mean, he had to be a leader. Uh, yeah, I could totally see him at any moment, given the 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 you know this is our Independence Day speech at any fucking moment. W- right. when, when did this film come out? Nineteen ninety nine, or was it nineteen ninety seven? I'm trying to I'm blanking out on the year because uh, Independence we'll Day came out nineteen ninety six. Our local uh, well, you guys should know when there. this film came out. You guys are co hosting it, aren't you? That's a Tyler question, Tyler. <laughs> Whether you're co hosting it or not. How's it under that bus? No, no, no. It was, it was 99. It was 99. So yeah. it came out the same year as Deep Blue Sea. Yeah. All right. So that actually leads me right into my next question. Why is this movie better than Deep Blue Sea? Why is this movie deep better than Deep Blue Sea? It's more it's entertaining. Not. It is better. This movie yeah. is not better than it Deep Blue Sea. It is not Blue better than Deep Blue Sea. Objectively, it's better oh, than no, Deep Blue Sea. No, it's not. Oh, no, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. No, I completely answered wrong. No, I think Deep Blue Sea is much better than Lake Placid. Mm. No, it's better. No. It's no. It's better. Deep Blue Sea is more entertaining. I think it's got better kills. I think... Okay, I will say this. The CGI in Deep Blue Sea is pretty bad. No, and it's like, fucking terrible. We like, have... It is also pretty bad, and too. And another the CGI constant, sucks. really annoying chick character that you wish died. Oh, wait, in that one she does. Yeah. See, we again, have, where, we have like, evidence like based that. on our wonderful Instagram uh, listeners that, based on the poll, Deep Blue Sea is better. Yes. Based on our fucking poll, yes. Deep Boom. Blue Sea is better. Yes, it had a 60-40%. Yeah. What was that? Hmm? Nothing. Uh... uh no, what? no, no. What was that? What was, what what was, was that, that ringing? There's nothing. What yeah. was that? I think that ringing was coming from Tyler. Yes, it was. No. Tyler. Yes, it was. Tyler. So, finally. Okay. Let us. Was that you, Tyler? Be be honest. It was. All right. Let us vote. <laughs> Punishment I, shot. I motherfucking I. I. You have to vote. I. All right, oh, Sammy. Oh, finally. We just what was terrible yeah. is honestly, yes. Tyler could have been like, it's one of the voices in your head, Sammy. It's one of the voices in your head. <laughs> oh, oh finally. God. After we just talked about how he never gets fucking punishment shots. Dude. Oh, see? I Shot him it. in the foot. Tyler, yes. there you go, buddy. There's a Jaeger shot for you. Yeah, Sorry, Make sure you blow that dust off, okay? <laughs> yeah, go fuck yourself. Off. Jaeger with dust. Yum. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I've been waiting for this moment to happen. It's been this that moment. <laughs> that was good. That was okay. good. That was worth See, it. I apologize the way for he my feels bat about like Jaeger, Where me and you can drink and get fucking Jaeger all fucking day long. Yeah. No, is the way I feel fucking hip about Unmodic. All right. So I really don't give a shit what anybody else says. Like this movie is like is better than Deep Blue Sea. Deep Blue Sea is a crock of shit. Uh, this movie came out the same year, but it's a lot more entertaining because, like, because it doesn't take itself too seriously. And I felt like Deep Blue Sea took itself way too fucking seriously. I'll give you that. I, t- I'll give him that. Yeah. And on top of that, it didn't have an LL Cool J attached to it. It didn't have an LL Cool J. Which automatically is a fault of it, then. No, it's not a fault. It's a fucking plus. It doesn't have an amazing fucking goddamn theme song. He's going to quote it any second now. LL Cool J. An amazing fucking theme song. In the Deep Blue episode, that LL Cool J was actually. My head is like a shark fan. Deep, oh. You knew cool it was coming. J. I was just literally volleying it. It was going yeah. to happen. LL Cool J really wasn't a good part of that movie. I didn't really care for LL Cool J. I even no, said it was that fucking the terrible. episode. I, I told and you don't care for this movie either, so your taste doesn't matter. No, it's just I think that it's more entertaining in some way. I just find it more entertaining. I, I The out to sea, out in the ocean, the whole thing being underwater, mm-hmm. the whole, especially that whole sequence when the shark is bringing him to the, the big, huge uh, viewing glass. I, I loved it. I thought it was more entertaining. Lake Placid was more of just a lot of comedy dialogue. That's How come we don't have a, a good horror movie based on crabs? I'm sure there is one. crabs are boring. Crabs are fucking amazing. Nah, they're boring. Can you imagine getting your fucking shit torn apart by fucking crabs? Nah, they're boring. Nah, crabs would be awesome. 
Dude, I've seen more videos of crabs getting torn apart by other like fish and yeah. whatever, like what have you, like fucking like. <laughs> which is why, it'd be, which yeah. would be why it'd be awesome to see a crab fucking start tearing people apart. Well, I think piranha is better. I mean, piranha is well, piranha is always thought to be you know a man eater, yeah. and shit like that. All yeah. right, that's why you take an animal you don't think of as a man eater and make them a man eater. Yeah, pretty fucking amazing. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Would be I'll, a, I'll make a horror movie about a like killer slug. Yes, that, that'd be. Funny. You did. It's, it's called movie. Slither. No, <laughs> okay. No, 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 no those were no, no. no. They were I, fucking alien slugs. They were okay. alien Guys, slugs. But there like, is I think a grindhouse like, movie called Slugs. Yeah. It's a old movie from the seventies uh, called Slugs. It's a horror unless movie. they're genetically modified slugs that like emit acid. Yeah, waste of time. There's a whole bunch of them out there. I mean, there, there's. Which, by the way, the slugs from Slither are in the MCU. Oh gosh, they are. Wow, and and the collector's collection, because uh, Gunn fucking directed that it, both of them. It's in the, his collection in the background. So it's the so equivalent the of seeing Annabelle sitting in the all the refuse yes. in Aquaman. Yes, okay. it, they Slither are officially remake. part of the MCU canon. So there's just basically just another version of Night of the Creeps. It's basically what it is, to me. which is amazing. So. Yeah. Night of the Creeps is good. But. Yeah. Anyways, back to you, Tyler. Yeah. So moving on. All right. So like, so another thing I really liked about this whole movie was like was like was some of the, like the really, really dark jokes and probably like one of the darkest ones of all was like, was uh, where Hector is trying to talk to the sheriff after like the, after his deputy has had his head bitten off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, he tells him about like, about like a dream that he had when he was a child where like, where he was headless and like his parents like wouldn't let him in the house <laughs> because he would bump into all the expenses. Yeah. But he got to be part of the game as the ball. <laughs> And then, like, the and I was just happy to be a part of it. The neighborhood kids came over and started kicking his head like a soccer ball, oh, and like, and like, you know, he just he couldn't help himself but to be happy because he was like he was just kind of like a part of the game. Yeah, yeah. And like, and uh, and like, and so like, this is not only like hilarious, but again, like, it's it's really really good writing, and it's an example of how like how this movie doesn't take itself too seriously. It's it, like, in short, it's darkly entertaining story, um, and you learn a lot about Hector's childhood like with the story alone because like because he like you learned that like that he what like that he was a rich kid and he resented his parents because they seemed to value things more than like they valued him yeah and like and since he was a rich kid like he really didn't have a whole lot of friends so even when he's like he's literally headless and being kicked around he's just thankful that finally somebody wanted to play with him yeah, yeah. which which in itself is funny but i also think it's interesting that the the platt character you know hector um I love also that he will like tear down his own bullshit because he's like, I saw more honesty in that dragon's eyes. Eh, fuck it. Like, blah, 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 blah. And like, goes about his day. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, so even, even like, even, even like Kelly Scott, the character you hate, she's just like, she's like, just cut the bullshit. And he's just like, ah, fuck it. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's why I see this movie more as a comedy more than anything horror. It's like more. There's really, it's right, a so horror so rom com. So, so I'll tell. I'll tell you. Not what. a rom com. It is a horror rom com. Oh yes, it is. Dude, right. so, so you kind of alluded to earlier, and I'll tell you exactly why that is. And like, and this is, this is, in my opinion, like I think this is why this movie works out so well is because you have the director Stephen Miner, as you mentioned, like you know he did Halloween or he did uh, Friday two and three, he did Warlock, he did Halloween H two O, and then you have like David uh, E Kelly coming in to do the writing. Yeah. And like you did, like uh, Ali McBeal and some other sitcoms. Yep. So like that's why this movie works is because you had like this, you had like this, like this horror director, and you had like this, like this comedy writer, and they kind of came together. And like, and to me, man, like this movie works really, really well as like as a horror comedy. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. It's just it. it like it's I said, it, it's got some funny scenes in it. I'm not gonna lie. There's some funny lines in it. There's funny characters in it, but it's just it's it's not the best. All right. All right, so let me let me uh, let me try to uh, let me try let me let me try to clue into like some of your uh, you, like you know like some of the things that you really really like about movies. What did you think about the score by Steve Ottman or John, okay. sorry, John, John Ottman? John Ottman is a very interesting composer because he hasn't really done that many. He's a very uh, he's he has a big um, partnership with Brian Singer. He's done a lot of Brian Singer movies like uh, The Usual Suspects. Um, he did uh, he also did Superman Returns, so he did a recreation of John Williams' iconic score for Superman. Um, he doesn't do that many horror movies. He's done one horror movie that I remember, which is called House of Wax, the remake. If you all seen that one, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I thought I actually I thought that was a very good title sequence. But John Ottman is, he hasn't really done anything like that people would remember. So I wouldn't find, he's not one of my favorite composers. I have a couple Dude, of his scores, but I, I like the score. Of no, this no, movie, man. I, but the thing is, I downloaded the score to listen to it and go through it because I wanted to hear if I can find anything iconic. And it, it's okay, but 
it's been heard before in other movies. It's not iconic in my, any way. So, so I'll give there's it, no I'll, theme. No, really. I'll, I'll give that to you. I'll give that to you. Like so, like so, this movie has the same sort of like action adventure mixed with dread, yes. just like the Jaw scores does. So, yeah, so, like, so there, I, I, I kind of see what you're saying. Like, there's nothing really like that sort of like draws us apart from like from other people. Yeah, but like, but there is something very fun about the score and like and very kind of like kind of. Kind of like I said, like kind of dreadful about it, like that, like kind of hints to like to the dread of a like, of the crocodile it lurking under under the water. And we kind of mentioned this before about how like how you don't really see the movie, see the uh, the crocodile for most of the movie, um, except for like three minutes and forty three seconds. And that's just like how the crocodile is, like is that it's constantly lurking under the water. Right, you can't see it. But you know it's there. True, and that's what the score does. Well, that, that, that's true. But there's also some other things I've noticed about the score that it. Oh, I know you probably, you guys are probably going to completely object to this, but there is a little bit of comparisons to Science of the Lambs in the score. I heard a little bit of Howard Shore's Science of the Lambs in the score. I don't know if everybody might think I'm crazy, but I'm a score hound. in the basket. <laughs> nah, yep. Well, you're gonna need lotion. No. no <laughs> But yeah, did you ever hear any of that? Like, did you ever hear Howard Shore's type on Sounds of the Lambs? You can hear it a little bit in the score. Like, it, I'm going to be playing it at the end of this uh, podcast, but you can hear a little bit of it. It's it's there. Yeah, I, I I'll give that to you. Like, you can kind of hear it a little bit. It just sounds a little bit like Howard Shore, but there's just nothing. There's nothing. To remember, there's not something like oh, I can go down the you know go down the road. I listen to a lot of scores, and I can't. There's nothing remembering in this score but it, it, it works for the Your movie fucking score whore yeah i'm a score whore but yeah that, that's how i feel yeah no that's fair all right so like so uh a couple of a couple of other things i want to point out like was the uh so stan Winston did like did the practical effects for this movie that i was impressed with i mm-hmm. thought those looked good especially yeah. the gator above the, the sorry the crocodile above the water i thought that was really cool yeah and like and and so there's something to be said about that like you know stan's when stan Winston doing the like the practical effects of the uh the crocodile it was like it was fully animatronic it could swim it could snap and all that good stuff like it was it was awesome um, so digital domain who actually did like the, uh, the sinking of the Titanic, they did the CG crocodile. Like, so with, with the great job that you did, that they did with Titanic, you would kind of expect a better crocodile out of them. However, like the CG, Probably depending cro- on the, budget. the CG crocodile was, uh, definitely lacking. It's the thing that I noticed how I compare it to deep blue sea because deep blue sea had very bad CGI for the sharks. The croc was, I, I actually enjoyed Stan Winston's practical effects more than the cgi yes. i thought that especially the part when hector's in the water facing it and you see it that's really cool and also the part where he's inside the helicopter that's all animatronic i thought that was really realistic it looked really good so but the cgi especially the grizzly bear scene although very cool it looked dated as fuck it did not look yes, good at all but if you can teleport yourself back in time to, to, to when you first saw that happen, true, you were like, "Oh my god!" I guarantee it. Yeah, probably. And but that the, the thing is, there's some movies that are from the like Terminator Two. When you see Terminator yeah. Two, the special effects, I still think it looks good to this because day. Because they're practical. No, no, I'm talking about the CGI because that was actually oh, one of the first oh, oh, movies. Oh, you're talking about the... The Abyss oh, gotcha, is sorry. one of the first movies to use CGI mainly in movies other than um, the last Starfighter and Tron and stuff like that, but to mainly use it in a really... Would you classify Tron as CGI? It was... Because they basically a, just retraced over everything. They had a little bit of CGI in that movie, <sighs> yes. Just like the last Starfighter, that was like the really practical CGI, but... I don't know if I would classify it there, as There's CGI. some CGI from the early 90s that looks better than the CGI that came out in the later 2000s, but it all really matters on budget. That's what I see. You know, I think the uh, Jurassic Park still looks good to this day. There's scenes in Jurassic Park that look amazing. What about Jurassic Pork? What the fuck is Sh- Jurassic Pork? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> what the fuck is... I'm, I'm missing it. You guys got to... I had to fill in for the Liddy roll. Come on now. <laughs> So yeah, but uh, the Stan Winston did a great, amazing job. But he always does. That's the thing. I, I don't think he's ever. I mean, he also created Pumpkinhead. Oh, I love that? Pumpkinhead. He, he oh, is amazing. really good at his practical effects. Stan Winston, um, Rob Botton, Bolton, I think it's called. Um, there, there's so many good ones out there. But uh, Tom Savini. I mean, his practical effects, yeah. uh, his horror effects are just amazing. Yeah, Rick Baker. Rick Baker. Yes, uh, Nick Rick. 
Who? Nicotero. Nicotero. Greg Nicotero. Another good one. Also becoming a director now. Did the Walking Dead series. But I ain't going to lie. Stan Winston, I was impressed by that. And I even told Sammy when we were watching that, that's Stan Winston. That looks good. I, I, I'm I very impressed with that. And you never are. You're never not impressed of his work. He is an amazing special effects. Yeah. Well, this is what the guy does. All right. So like, so in the late 90s, it was a great time for man versus beef stories. Like Creature you know, like, features. Dude, it was fucking great. It was fucking amazing. Like So, yeah. like, so we had this movie. We had The Ghost in the Dark in 1996 Ooh, good one. yeah fuck yeah and we were going to talk about that one day uh anaconda in 1997 the edge yes i was and, hoping you were to bring that up that's a good one right there in 1996 and uh, just to list a few um so like so here's my question like so like so what is a uh, a man versus beast movie that you want to see done well because there's so many that have done before already what is one that like that you like that has already been done that you've kind of felt like hit the, like you know missed the mark um, or like, or maybe one that hasn't been done at all. <laughs> I, already, you, I already know what Stu's that, is. You already talked you, about his. That you really, really think that like that needs to be done and it should be done well. Hmm. What are I you w- thinking for me? Your crabs. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you, you <laughs> did okay. bring that up. Let's talk that about up. Stu's said, crabs. See, <laughs> <to see> <laughs> movie. Is, is there a movie <laughs> crabs. already done? You said a man versus beast movie that that needs to be no, done. No, he uh, said he also said something that's never been done. Okay, yeah. No, 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 no. I said I said like that, like some maybe something that's already been done. But like hasn't really been done well. Well, okay. Like or maybe it was like something hasn't been done at all. Like I'll, I'll okay, go, I'll, I'll go, I, like so like so for contemporaries like for 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 contemporary reasons, I'll bring up like you know like the most recent Godzilla versus like you know Kong movies or like or the Kong movies in general, Skull Island, all that stuff. Like the movies are not bad. Like they're fun to watch. They're great popcorn movies. But like but the characters in the story are not there. I don't give right. a fuck who you are. Those movies like as far as like a story, it's far all as, just watch them duke it out. Watch these huge monster beasts duke it out. Yeah, fuck yeah. It's you like it's like it's like let's get to this island where like where there's yeah. like this mysterious gigantic creature is, and let's all watch them fuck up shit. Yeah, yeah. here's a good one: arachnophobia. Uh, all right, yeah, okay, cool. That's all so, spiders. So, so, so spiders. I'd actually would like to see a so better version did, of that one. You didn't like eight legged freaks. No, that one sucked. That one fucking sucked. Uh, fuck, what, what's his What's his name? The uh, Arquette. Yes, oh, I hate David Arquette. I have never liked him as an actor. I, you know, you I didn't, didn't like him. I as didn't like Dewey. him in Scream. I know. I do not like him in Scream. But no, or Doofy. Arachnophobia. Doofy. I am a huge okay. fan. Hold on, I'm a huge fan of spiders. I love insects, and I think arachnophobia would be really. I think that would they kind of did that. A lady of freaks. But that's that's more of a gigantic spider. I'm talking about little spiders all over the place. Arachnophobia. Right, so, so we're gonna make a differentiation, I guess, between like creatures as they're naturally supposed to be versus like expanded creatures or like or genetically you know, modified like, creatures. Okay. I, I guess so. I don't get really give a shit. Okay, so I just was thinking about a scene with crabs. All right, so <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. In the original creep show movie with Ted Danson. Okay. All right. The You'll scene where he, yeah. yeah, where he gets buried oh, and the crabs are coming like up coming up to and him? shit like that. that Tell is, me that wasn't fucking that creepy is, as shit. It is creepy because right. you can't defend yourself. Exactly. It, and it worked really. It was kind of fucking terrifying. Well, and even in in again, Amasha Jaws, when you see like her remains and they're like no yes. no 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 no. It it does give it that kind of additional little like Ugh. Exactly. So crabs can be done and can be done in a fucking really fuck freaky way. So you just really wants just, crabs. Yeah, I, like I said, I, it's it's a creature that I think that could f- little by little tear you a fucking part, and that's fucking terrifying. <laughs> All right, how about you, uh, Sammy? Sorry, um, <laughs> crab noises. Nom, 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 nom. Crab people. Crab uh, people. <laughs> crab people. <laughs> Taste like crab. Look like people. Are you done? Am I ever done? No. Exactly. Never. Never. Can't turn that off. Um, let me think. Oh, gosh. Oof. I mean, I love, I, I love, see, this is how Tyler and I are so different. Like, I love Jaws because I love sharks and he's like terrified of them. But if I had to go like guttural instinct, something that would like really disturb me, I, I'm going to have to go something in the vein of like insect ish. Like, I know that there's been like legitimate, like, films made with like um like bees and stuff like that but like almost like you know like um thinking of like getting eaten alive by fire ants or something like that i could be like really creepy anything that can like crawl into your ear and like just just start nomming and stuff like i I can't stand earwigs like like, earwigs 
that would be my film. Earwigs freak me the French toast out because they go in there and they can just start eating and shit and, and nesting and then making more earwigs and blah, blah, blah. so yeah, like a, like a earwigs versus like or like a earwigs meets uh, body snatchers kind of situation. Yeah, yeah. or, or like even like the fucking thing in Wrath of so where it's, it's like exactly that's what I'm talking about. Like nomming on their brains and then you have all these zombies like. Meh. Well, then if I had to pick something that would freak me out, that it would be anything that I'd have to do with snakes. And snakes is... They've already done amazing movies with snakes. Though. Snakes on he a plane. He literally jumped six feet when I saw a baby gardener under a trash can this week. Do you really have to that. bring that up? It Thank was you. hilarious. <laughs> the snake was so cute and tight. I don't like snakes. Come on. It's just it's not my thing. I hate them. Oh, no. Okay, Andy. Yeah. All right. So my whole thing is like, is that I want to see a Bigfoot movie done well. I don't think there's ever been Harry no, and the Hendersons. There, no, there's, no, 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 no. Like, so, like, so, like scary Bigfoot. Yeah. No, there's actually, there's been a few. Like, like there's been like a, there's been Abominable and there was like, there was a Willow Creek, which was done by uh, ba- uh Bobcat both, uh, Goldthwait. Yeah. yeah. Like there's been a, quite a few like that have been like been done relatively well. But like, but they they didn't they didn't gain the notoriety like that of like of of Jaws or like or this movie like Placid has has. Um, I would like to see a Bigfoot movie done very very well. Like we're like we're really really focused on characters, um, and it really really focused on story. And like the Bigfoot was just kind of more or less like the the driving, the the, dri- the driving like you know like a sort of MacGuffin or like or the driving like like. Well, for, I would uh, make an argument fact. that uh, Wendigo, which is basically the predecessor of. Um, Bigfoots. Oh yeah, Wendigos. Wendigos are the predecessors of Bigfoots. They're you know, not, but not, I thought also wasn't like I thought also wasn't it like um uh, like skin skinwalkers. It also. can be. It depends on which which story which, you're going. Okay. By. You know what I would actually have to pick now when you do <gasps> Bigfoot is Goat they would sires. have to make a really good they movie. Can suck all the ghosts they want. I'm going fuck fuck them because it could be actually with a whole character development, the scientific scientific uh, science behind it of the Loch Ness monster. You know, that would Nessie. Be a, there's a Nessie movie out there? Yeah, but it's more comedy. I love that we've now oh, segued yeah. no, into, I'm talking like, about, like, a good horror movie of the last. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean, as, as we should. I mean, like, yeah. as we really should. Because, like, cause, like, think about Jaws and think about Lake Placid. Like, these were creatures that we, like, that we knew about. We knew about Great Whites. We knew about yeah. Crocs and everything like that. However, both of those creatures were far... They were basically about, like, a times and a half what, like, the normal creatures that, that were... They were substantially are. larger. And also, we introduced the rogue factor, you had these these outliers, not only in size, but also like the man eater. Another one, uh, the uh, freaking it. You said it, the lion. Um, Ghost in dar- the darkness. Yes, again, another apex predator going like rogue. You know, that's what makes it second. What there were, there were there were two of them. Okay, that, okay, that well, was like that was the thing. Like it was it was the lion. It was like it was the lions of Savo, or like are the man eaters of Savo or mm-hmm. Savo rather. There were actually two of them, and they were actually female. They weren't male. That and that makes it that much more. Cujo <laughs> would be another one that is someone yep. that goes rogue of the man eater. Mm-hmm. Um, that worked really fucking well. I can't. I guess I can't put Orca in there because Orca is more of a revenge story because of killing its baby or something like that. Is that what the Orca is? Because I yeah. But whenever I hear Orca, I, my mind automatically goes to free will and I see him jumping over that fucking goddamn. <laughs> yeah, that, that kind of just takes it away right there. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, hey, which sucks because killer whale is fucking amazing idea of a fucking creature, but free will just ruined it for me. Tyler, great question though. That's a great question. No, I mean, it drives a lot of a lot of uh, a lot of conversation. Like, like what. What what animal out there like you know like uh, scares you enough to where you think that there should be a story about it where people are fighting against like this one this one creature like you know like four motherfucking five. hippos and that dude like dude it, that's that funny. be funny a mention that motherfucking hippos fuck. so we talked we talked about Congo like where it has a great scene but only has a scene and the yes. movie the movie is about about killer apes yep but we like we we only talked about like about the scene where like where the hippos are like or are attacking the rafts and everything like that. Like it was only like a brief scene, but like, but hippos don't get the respect they should. Mm-hmm. No, they are, they are, they are gnarly. Extreme, they're exactly. actually more dangerous than um, crocodiles and anything, everything. aren't they? Yeah, yeah. I think they, they have more, more deaths people. per year. Wasn't it like 400 or something? Annually? Yeah, I think it's like 500. Yeah. It's, it's up there yeah. per year. They have more deaths than I think sharks or crocs or, or tigers combined. Oh, wow. Or tigers. Yeah. It's it's insane. Like you, you just don't fuck with hippo. You know that would, no. actually that's even a good title, hippo. You know, just for a movie. Right? Yeah, I don't know. You don't think so? Not for a title. Well, what do you think would be a good title for? Hippo? I don't fucking know, but it, I don't think hippo. Uh, I mean, it just it just doesn't hungry hungry hippo. Hippo just right. doesn't sound. Oh, there you go. Hungry hungry, hungry hippo. I, exactly. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. We're, we're we're making like you know like Jumanji and Jungle Cruise and right. fucking all these. Yeah, movies. it just doesn't hungry, sound hungry, rampage. Hippo. 
Let, let's go ahead and make Hungry Hungry Hippos. Have that dude that Dwayne, did all the of the Dwayne The Rock twi- Johnson, you know, sorry. Have <laughs> the dude that did all of the teaser <laughs> trailers. It. Like, uh, Little Tortilla Boy. Have him do, like, the voiceover for the hold trailer. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hippo. Did you say Little Tortilla Boy? Yeah. yeah. Pablo Francisco. Pablo Francisco joke. Have when he's doing the the, the narrator he's talking about it. Boy. And how oh, I must eat. not have seen that 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 stand up. Are I'm you sorry. kidding me? I must not have. Oh apparently. my gosh! You yes, it just today. caught me by so fucking surprise that little oh. tortilla boy. I'm like, what? Because he's like, <laughs> no, no. So okay, Pablo Francisco, one of my favorites. Love him. He's hilarious. And yeah. he's talking about how like the voiceover guy in like the the early '90s, late '80s, I know which one you're talking like, about. Like, like, welcome to downtown, blah, blah, blah. and like he could take. And he was joking. He's like, he could take the most money. Dane storyline and make it like sound amazing. He's like Arnold Schwarzenegger ass little tortilla boy. It's amazing. Okay, I'm and gonna it's have to check really that shit out. Funny skit, it's but a funny like skit, you have yeah, that guy I've, I've read it. Hungry Hungry Hippo, blockbuster. Yeah. Overall, this movie does horror comedy really well, and it plays it straight, and it has a blast doing it. The characters are great. The writing is lean, and it doesn't fuck around at all. And uh, in short, I really wish we had more movies like this today. Hey guys, thanks for listening to our podcast, Barrel Age Flicks. We are so excited for the upcoming episodes headed your way and bonus episodes of The Small Batch, Sammy Selects, and now the new Tasting Room. If you like our show, please spread the word, give us a like, or leave us some kind of review on any of the social media pages. Give us a follow on Instagram, Barrel Flicks, or Facebook, Barrel Age Flicks. Our podcast is available on Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Anchor, Radio Public, Audible, Pocket Cast, Spotify, CastBox, YouTube, and now Pandora. Please shoot us an email at BarrelAgeFlicks at Gmail with comments and movie suggestions for future shows or any other things you'd like to let us know. Credit to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio on YouTube. Man, your music is awesome. We thank you so much for that. It's great. You guys go ahead and check him out. I just want to say thank you so much. We hope to see you guys next week. Thank you so much for listening. See you then.